Hello from Dresden. Uh, today is a very special day because Patrick is here, which means <laughs> we are uh, talking about a new release, release 4.0. Um, this time with a nice round number, we don't just want to take a look at the features that we're releasing this time, but rather take a look back at what got us here today. Some of the features that we're releasing this time around have a lot more to do or moving in this direction of being more of an employee experience platform, um, some things with HR integrations, um, things for Office 365, and we're excited to talk about those, but we really want to take a look at um, how did it all start? How did we get here? So. Patrick, thank you for joining me. My first question is just that. How did we all, how did we start? Well, first of all, it started with a different name. Um, in the beginning, it was Mitarbeiter app, which is the German term for employee app. So uh, Staffbase wasn't even in sight yet. And it, it all centered around the use case of internal communications, news giving, providing news to employees. And, and reaching all the employees. So, so that's really um, the, this narrow use case of communication, announcements, updates, and making sure you reach all the employees with it. Okay, but I know that in um, one of the very early, early releases, one of the things that we added was um, content pages. So really being able to um, provide static content in the app too, was that something based on customer feedback or just out of nowhere? <laughs> I would say a combination of both. We, we quickly got feedback, uh, but then also in the beginning, there weren't that many customers right away. So it's something we, we definitely also saw ourselves from the beginning that when you have this stream of news and announcements that then fades out on the, on the bottom of the app, you also have the need for more static type of information, really having a consistent place in your, in your menu where you see like a manual or um, a phone book, things that you really need to access all the time. And that's where content pages came in. Um, I also know that from the beginning or one of the, the things that our customers love most about the app is that it's completely branded um, to their company. Can you tell me about how, how did branding get started um, and what have been some of the developments that we've made it there? Oh boy, uh, branding actually went a long way in staff base. In the beginning, the options were very limited. So there was no branded app whatsoever. It was just one Mitarbeiter app in the store that you could download and use. Uh, but it wasn't really that customized to your company. You could change some of the colors and you could change um, the logo that appears within the app, but that really was it. So today, having branded apps, having your own logo on the home screen of the employees, being able to change all the colors and the layout even with things like custom CSS, um, I, I would say based on customer feedback, it really, really came a long way here. Um, let's talk about the introduction of plugins. So at the core of the app, we have um, news and, and this content pages thing. And then we started to develop plugins like forms and time tracking, things like that. Can you tell me a little bit about forms? Like what was the first use case of forms? How did it come about that we started developing additional plugins? Right, right, right. Well, once you see that you have this channel to all of your employees and that you have this top down type of communication with news and with pages, you very quickly see that you also want to have some kind of feedback channel from your employees, right? You want to have the chance to ask them questions and, and get their answers and um, implement processes where they submit uh, a form, for example. And that's really where we saw very quickly that a form is such a crucial tool within a communications app. Today, we, we have various plugins that we developed ourselves that are available in the platform, but we actually have a huge number of plugins that customers develop for themselves only to use to integrate their own systems. So the whole ecosystem really um, is, is much more sophisticated now than it was in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And I know definitely that Forms has become one of the most valuable plugins also to our customers where there's very a lot of use cases around that. Okay, so jump forward a few releases and um, we had the release of something important, groups, um, kind of indicating that user administration was becoming more complex, targeting was becoming more complex. What was the first use case for groups and um, who was kind of the target for that? Yeah, so the idea behind it was, or the, the reason why we built it was that we saw more and more larger organizations became customers of Staffbase, right? So you really had the need to target your communications. Because if, if you don't, you know, if it's not relevant to the employee, then it's just spam, right? it's just way too much. So we thought, um, and, and the first use case that we saw there was to have location-specific communication. So have a group for each of your locations and then really make sure that it's targeted and relevant to the, to the employees in that location. But then what we saw more and more what it became to was all kinds of targeted um, communication, for example, 
different departments, positions, or even groups of interest. Okay, cool. Um, I think then if we look chronologically, we're kind of around now um, release 2.9. That was a really important release because it included the release of chat. Um, I imagine that being a super daunting task when you're trying to create a chat feature that mirrors kind of the experience that people are, you know, having with messaging in their everyday lives. Um, how did that get started? Was that based on customer feedback and was it a daunting task at the beginning? It was, it was definitely a substantial development. I mean, you don't build a chat just out of nothing. It's, it's, a, it's a quite a major effort to, to build. And we heard a lot of feedback from our customers after having news and, and content pages. So that's all the top-down communication. You have comments, forms, so there is the bottom-up communication. But really there was no side-to-side -side yet, really a way for employees to connect with each other, to talk about the things that are happening at work, to organize lunch, um, talk about interests that they have. Um, there was nothing like that in StaffBase yet, but we really saw the need for it based on customer feedback that we got. So um, without thinking about challenging something like a Slack or a Microsoft Teams, those collaborative chats that are out there. Uh, by the way, we, we're using Slack as well internally, so there's really the need for having that next to a staff base, but still have that very easy, simple to use, quick form of, of messaging within staff base, and that's what we did with 2.9. When I first started um, at staff base, there was a lot of buzz around this feature called Spaces. Um, we already talked about groups and how this was um, really intended for targeting purposes, but Spaces really takes things a step further. Can you tell me what the difference between those two are, who Spaces was intended for, and why Spaces instead of just groups? Yeah, uh, groups are super important when it comes to targeting, right? They were the first steps in, in making sure that employees only see the relevant content, and it was really coming with more larger organizations. But as we saw really, really big organizations coming to staff base, decentralized through multiple countries, you know, locations in all these countries, different languages, like really large structures, large organisms, we saw that there is a, a need for another level above groups. And, and that's what Spaces is for. And the really big thing that, that differences the both, differentiates the both of them is to have um, decentralized management of content. So for Spaces, you can have someone who is, for example, a regional editor, and they can manage the entire content of their site individually without having to go through a global role all the time. It also helps a lot with still keeping an overview on the admin panel. You don't see everything, you just see the stuff that is relevant for you, and that is super important. And the greatest thing about Spaces and groups as well, actually, is that employees don't even know about it. It's, they just see the content that is relevant to them, and everything else is just um, management tasks. Okay, <laughs> so talking about other things that employees don't know about, mm -hmm. um, enterprise features, things that are important for our internal communicators out there. Um, let's talk about analytics. Analytics was really a landmark development for us. Can you tell me about how that got started and um, why? Why analytics? <laughs> It was actually in one of the early versions of the platform already that we had some basic analytics right in the dashboard for admins, giving them the chance to see how the platform performs, how the usage is, and what content is successful, right? That's, I mean, that's super crucial and necessary for an internal communications platform. But as the years go by, as customers grew larger, decentralization, multiple locations, they really saw the need for having much more sophisticated insights, having filters and all these things. And that's what we solved then uh, in last fall with the big analytics update. And now there's this dashboard in the platform where you have all these possibilities, where you have really sophisticated user management insights, uh, but also on your content, even more detailed around news, which is still the core use case of the platform. Okay, so that's a really long history. We've talked about a lot of features from over the years, and now we have arrived at 4.0. Um, maybe you can tell us what is included in 4.0. We have a combination of some of the features that customers might already be aware of, some things that have been in testing and in beta for a few months now, and we think they're now polished and, and ready to go out as well as a couple of new stuff that uh, you might not know as well today, but that's really gonna be interesting moving forward. Okay, so what are the beta features? First and foremost, the new newsfeed. Um, that's something where we redesigned the, the way you interact with news as an employee, how you can now see inline videos, you have social interactions, uh, you have a totally new design. Uh, there are all these options also when it comes to, to image galleries. But also for admins, there, there's much more flexibility on, on the layout of the newsfeed and, and how to set it up. So it's really a major milestone for, for the news 
use case in, in general. And that's now going to be available to all customers. The, the second thing is the notification center. Um, that was also a, a big thing announced in the, in the last release as a preview version. And it's something that's going to be available to all employees directly now. So you see this log of all the notifications and, and really get an overview on what happened in case you, you missed something. And um, we took some time to, to polish the user experience there, but now it's ready and uh, available. Last but not least, the restore and trash functionality for admins, it's free, free of charge. And it's gonna be right there um, saving your life and when you need it. Um, that's the, the restore and trash feature. It now works with all content types, even with things like entire spaces. Okay, great, nice. We took some time to polish those things and now we can roll them out to everyone. Um, and what are the new features that are included? One thing that is that is really new and that is a, like one of the big initiatives here at Staff Base is that we want to integrate HR services, right? Um, things like SAP, Workday, ADP. And one thing that we did in one of the releases before was integrating well with SAP Fiori. And the, the, the really the link that was missing is to a real SAP system that does not have this Fiori thing, uh, a real SAP HCM, and really give employees the possibility now as a first use case to take a leave of absence through the app in a very intuitive interface, in a very easy to use way, something that you're not used from SAP really, and uh, be able to integrate that with the app. The other great thing is yet another addition to our Office 365 integrations family. We added files, we added uh, Microsoft Teams and all these in, in recent versions of the app. And now you finally can integrate calendars, personal Office 365 calendars, shared group calendars, uh, just integrate them into the app and make sure that all the employees see the calendars from your, your Office suite. Wonderful. So 4.0 folks, um, yeah, it has been a very special day in Dresden, but um, it's obviously, you know, a relief, so it's going to be even more special. What's going to happen this time? <laughs> I always think of a surprise, so... Oh, oh, that's, a ni that's nice. With much love, I baked this cake. So I think we can blow out the candles together and then we can, you know, show our colleagues that, that we love them. <laughs> okay, ready?